School of Design UPES Dehradun and is Chair of Immersive Learning at Shristi Manipal Institute of Art, Design and Technology, Bangalore. Thank you so much for joining us today, madam. It's a great pleasure to have you. Before I hand over the space to Dr. Nina Sabnani, uh, I'd like to give a short note on the structure uh, of the session today. Today's plenary is titled Restoring, Memory, Restoring Memories, which presents memories of individuals and communities through collaborative storytelling in the form of animated films. We have two such films today, Tanko Boleche, The Stitches Speak, which chronicles the individual's memory of loss, longing, and belonging, and Hum Chitra Banate Hai, we make images, which is based on a collective memory of identity through an art practice. Dr. Nina will speak about her film, Tanko Boleche, after which it'll be screened and we'll have discussion and Q&A session. We'll follow the same structure for the second film, Hum Chitra Banate Hai as well. So plenty of opportunities to interact. You can be as greedy as you like, just make sure the questions are to the point. Without further, further ado, I'd like to welcome you, madam. You can take over. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Ibrahim for inviting me. And uh, I'm very happy to be a part of your conference uh, online. Uh, if you allow me, I'll share my screen. And uh, Um, are you able to see the whole screen now? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, great. So, just to add a little bit to what uh, Pranavadi said about uh, my work, I, I work with memories and found art, or art created by others, and putting them together, what exists, and telling it through a process of collaborative and participatory filmmaking, accessing memories and understanding how they emerge, and then to communicate through the art forms created by my participants is a slow process. So the filmmaking takes time. There are lived stories that never make it to the pages of history. They lie dormant as memories unheard and often unacknowledged and disappear with the owners of memories. But memories persist and nag, especially memories of loss and displacement. Women carry the burden of preserving and chronicling memory. They keep memories alive in several ways, embroidery being one of them. Cloth is a material uniquely suited for homemaking, <clears throat> for creating a space of comfort and privacy. Cloth cannot make a house but it can make a given house a home. And sometimes it can make a home even in the absence of a house. Embroidery may be seen as an act of expressing memory and the ability of embroidered cloth to make a place home is directly related to its qualities as an object of memory. The act of embroidery is a silent one and memory until expressed is silent and women are often silent. They get articulated through their stitches. Embroidery works with the softness and foldability of cloth and adds to it a personalization, gives it an identity. For displaced persons, the, this quality of belongingness is something precious and a piece of embroidered fabric can provide that in a way that requires little or no wealth that can be opened up and spread out when one wants to use it or indulge in it, and which then can be folded and put away. Cloth and memory share qualities, both fade, fragment, perish, and are therefore quite vulnerable. They are silent and often folded away. At the same time, they can be tenacious and strong and can live on for years to come. Collaborations between embroiderers, the keepers of memory, and oral historians, the seekers of memory, and make these voices and stories visible 
and durable, extending the lifespan of memory. Today, we will explore this through the animated film Taco Boliche or The Stitches Peak. Let me give you a background to this film before we see it. I'm just not moving forward. 26 January 2001 will always be remembered by people in Kutch as the day when they were displaced overnight by a natural disaster. With no one to blame, it was impossible to make sense of the earthquake, of the colossal tragedy, displacement and personal losses. A year later, a visitor to Kalaraksha motivated the women to embroider and applique their memories, memories of the earthquake in a language they were familiar with. This they did reluctantly at first, but quite soon began to derive solace from it. A few years later, they approached me to give life to their embroidered narratives. The story is pieced together from conversations we had with four main protagonists of their film. Their memories of events in their lives form the backbone of the script. Okay, it's not moving forward, I don't know why. I might have to um, go into the, you know, the other mode. Presentation mode? Yeah, I, I think I'll just, you know what I'll do? I'll just stay with the, I mean, I know it's. Not, what is happening? Sorry about this. No problem. No problem uh, uh. Okay, I think we'll stay in this mode. I mean, you are able to see a bit of this. Uh, yes. But it's okay because, you know, I'm not able to move forward otherwise, you know. Uh -huh. Okay, it's, it works. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So then I think if we go, oh, mm -hmm. don't tell me. Shit. No, it has to go. Then I think I'll have, I'll only have to wait. Okay. So um, there, yeah, you saw there were four characters. So Maggie Ben Maria is somebody who came to Sumrasar after she was married. And uh, and then we have Rani Ben, uh, who migrated um, in the war of uh, the India-Pakistan war of 1971-72. And her son Prakash, who was just eight years old when they left uh, Kaj, I mean, they left um, uh, the part that was you know, on the borders of Pakistan and India, and, uh, and Judy Freter, who, who actually came there as a researcher and, uh, you know, to do research on soup embroidery, but then she got um, embroiled, and not, not embroiled, but I'd say that she reinvented herself and stayed on to help create the Kalaraksha Foundation and, and then a design school for for the artisans. So, <clears throat> so our process was collaborative each day. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, we spoke to all of them, uh, shared ideas and ways of working. And our process was collaborative. Each day began with tea and conversation and by mid morning, we were talking about work and listening helped a lot. Uh, the images had to be read in a particular way. Film demands its own structure, you know, and we have to think about how to order the kind of findings and all the conversations we had into a narrative. So we broadly looked at, you know, themes, events, plot, setting and point of views of our protagonists. So the theme was really a journey towards self-identity, but also there were other themes connected to it. Uh, they wanted us to, you know, uh, um, focus on uh, 
the intellectual activity of the artisan, you know, and to to acknowledge that their that their work was art and not just craft. You know, there is a craft in every art, but it's not just craft. That's what they wanted us to emphasize, and also to celebrate the passion of the artisan. So there were lots of things that we needed to you know include in the in the film. And the events also that had to be called were like huge, you know. They were spread over a long period of time and space. And uh, so there was the war story, there was the journey across to India, uh, the problems of migration, migration due to marriage, and then this evolution of the craft and this organized, the organization of Kalaraksha and then reflecting on one surrounding. So there was a lot of ground to be covered. So the art they had created represented memories as well as their observations and reflections of their surroundings. Now, if you look at these images here, the one on the left is one of the images of the earthquake because uh, she, the lady, the woman who, the artist who made this, she said that, you know, everything was flying around in the air, you know, so she wanted to create that feeling. And I think uh, it's as good as any abstract art that one can, you know, think about. And if you see the one on the right, the extreme right, you know, uh, that is the migration story. They call it migration piece. You know, if you ask them, like, uh, if you want to order this piece, you have to say, please um, make me a migration piece. So this is the migration piece. Uh, at the bottom <clears throat> is Pakistan and on uh, and on above that is India. And that white strip that you see in the middle is the desert. Is is also like the thing that the border, but the border is also the desert, you know. So that is something uh, one has to, one can only find out if one asks that question, you know, as you ask, like, can you please explain uh, your piece, you know, what have you gotten in here? Otherwise, uh, you would not know, you know. So the that really, uh, one thing that came home to me is that an image is not that self-explanatory. You know, it needs uh, some dialogue. It needs some sort of an interaction. So, uh, so for the plot, we chose to follow the logic of a conversation, which allows the viewer to knit their own nature. So now, because we have to, add, you know, do so many of these uh, elements have to find their way in the narrative. I thought, uh, you know, conversation is an ideal structure because <clears throat> a conversation never ends. You know, it never, nobody allows you to complete your sentence when you're talking, you know. People always hijack, they, you know, they, you suddenly go somewhere else, you know. So it looks very natural. It doesn't feel like now, where are we going now? Where, where are we going with this? So, so when you have four people talking, each one, you know, says their own piece. And in that sense, we're able to talk about various things, you know. So that was the whole thing in that. Uh, the setting uh, for the film was uh, Sumra Sarshe, a village uh, none of them belonged to, but they had journeyed there to make sense of their lives. And the story had multiple narrators. We used the sentences they had spoken, sometimes about themselves, sometimes about each other. Uh, we never asked them to say anything afterwards. It's just in conversation, whatever they said, we had recorded. There, were, there was something very stunning. They had said when our recorder was not on, so we missed that completely. But, you know, it's in my memory, but it's not there in the film. I mean, it happens, you know. <laughs> then there were others, too, who spoke to us, but not so much in depth as these four. That's why I'm calling this as, as you know, individual memories of, of an event, which uh, to most, you know, play, I mean, uh, in all the history books, you never really find <laughs> those narratives, you know. Um, we realized that in the act of explaining their artworks, 
they were beginning to recall other memories they had not accessed until that point. So while they're showing me something, then they'll remember, oh, first they'll start with, this is what I was doing that day. This is what I thought about it. And then suddenly they'll remember something else. And then you think, uh, oh, it's not there in the, in the artwork, but it is something that they were recalling. So it probably happened each time, you know, they were narrating something to a listener. So the embroidered surface, you know, of the cloth became a territory, a space occupied in lieu of place, and for the participants dislocated from place by an earthquake or a forced migration due to war. So the cloth provided the space for a new place to locate and situate the past and to recall it. The cloth became a portable territory that could be folded away. Now, two kinds of memories emerged in this act of telling. One, that was of making the piece, a memory of the process and arriving at the image, like I said before. The other was that of the event itself. And in between were moments of reflection that were stimulated by their own images and our questions. The act would begin with defining the location and identifying the characters in the narrative. And this would be followed by a description of the event that took place and their own role in that activity. Occasionally, they would stop to describe what they were thinking and feeling. And the images were serving two purposes. They were mnemonics for the events represented in the cloth, as well as invoking introspection. So the imagination was stimulated through these mnemonics for the narrator as well as the listener. Like, just show you um, a bit here. <laughs> So we imitated that gesture, you know, in the animation. So in this case, the narration is imitative of cinema. Wherein the, wherein the delusion sense the time image is a coexistence of distinct durations or of levels of duration. A single event can belong to several levels. <coughs> this negotiation of multiple times inspired us to structure the script as a conversation, like I said, and, <clears throat> and it allowing the individual voices to be heard. So the images created by the artists and the manner in which they move through their work in the act of describing their artwork as cinematic and their visual and tactile attributed attributes lent themselves easily to film animation. Their voices animated the figures they had created <coughs> and the movement was <coughs> provided by the way they turned the cloth in all directions. So the invocation of touch made the virtual experience more immediate. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. We were inextricably drawn into the universe and wanted to recreate this experience in the film. So we, you know, uh, mimicked this gesture. We visited the place where they had spent eight years as refugees and recorded the sounds of the wind and the environment. They were reluctant to accompany us to these spaces as the real geography still invoked sad memories of displacement and isolation. Even though the place had changed over the years, the hills were as they had depicted in their art and gave us new insights into the way they translated places and perspectives in their visual language. For example, the way they represent, you know, figures, 
so some figures were at right angles to the frame, some walked upside down, and some were mirrored size, sideways, as in the case of the bullock car. But so we we maintained that through the we we did not interfere with the orientation of the images uh, and we kept it just the way it is and animated in that way uh, this adherence to the orientation and depiction of the narratives was appreciated by the participants who also made suggestions about which elements to choose and which to leave out I think uh, it would be good to see the film now because uh, it would, uh, you know, I don't want to preempt everything. So if you like, uh, you can screen the film. Um, shall stop. I? Yeah, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll just start one minute. Are you, are you able to hear that? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
તો અમને કીધું કે ચલો હવે તમને મતલબ આખર શું કરો તો અમે એમ કીધું કે અમને ગમે એવું હિન્દુસ્તાનના ખૂણામાં નાખો પણ પાકિસ્તાનમાં નથી જવું અમારે હિન્દુસ્તાનમાં રહેવાનું તો એ લોકો કીધું કે તમારે કચ્છ જવું પડશે ઠીક છે અમે કચ્છ આવીએ અને આ રીતે અમે કચ્છ આવ્યા અને કચ્છમાં અમે મતલબ અહીંયા ચૂરા કરીને ગામ છે અહીંયાથી પંદરેક કિલોમીટર ત્યાં કેમ્પ બનાવી ચૂરા જ્યારે અમે આવ્યા ત્યારે કાંઈ મતલબ ત્યાં આવ્યા તો એ તે ડુંગરમાં લઈ ખટારા ગયા તો ગોળ સુધાય કે એક કીફે પીડી જાય તે લોકોને કોઈ વ્યક્તિ નથી સાવ ઉજળ મતલબ જંગલ જેવો વિસ્તાર ધીરે ધીરે અમે લોકો જે કઈ વગડામાં આ ઝાડમાંથી જે મતલબ ઝાડ કાસમાંથી જે ફૂંકાઓ વગેરે બનાવી પછી આમ મતલબ ધીરે ધીરે ટાઈમ પસાર થતો ગયો એમ થોડા ટાઈમ પછી પિતાજી ત્યાં પાકિસ્તાનમાં પણ શિક્ષક હતા એમણે સ્કૂલ શરૂ કરેલી અને અમે લોકો પછી અમારી મતલબ પ્રાથમિક શિક્ષણ અહીંયાથી જ શરૂ થયું અમે ઓગણીસો ને અસી સુધી જુરા કેમ્પમાં એઝ એ રેફ્યુજી હતા એના પછી ગવર્મેન્ટ બદલાવી અને ઓગણીસો ને અસી માં મતલબ અમને સિટીઝનશીપ મળી અને અમે લોકો સુમરા સરગામમાં આવ્યા ખેતીવાડી એમાં કરતા પછી ધરતી કપ છે ને તો રડવા મંડ્યા બધા તો આ મારી મમ્મી ઉભા છે તો અમે નાના નાના હતા તો અમને બધી ભેગા કરીને આમ કે રડો નહીં રડો નહીં કે તો એ રીતે આપણે મતલબ બે હજાર એક ભૂતકંપ આવે અને એને એ એટલો મતલબ માનસિક રીતે માણસ એમાં આવી ગયા કે કોઈ કોઈ જોઈ જોયો હોય નહીં જોઈ શકે આફ્ટર ધી અર્થ ક્વેક ઓફ ટુ થાઉઝન્ડ વન ટુ ડિફરન્ટ પીપલ ઇન્ડિપેન્ડન્ટલી આસ્ક અસ ટુ ડુ એસેન્શિયલી વટ્સ નેરેટિવ વર્ક ઓર એક્સપ્રેસિવ વર્ક જો આ જે વાર્તાનો કામ આમ તો શું છે કે પેચ વર્ક તો એ મતલબ અમારા પરંપરાગત કામ છે પણ એમાં એક વાર્તાને લઈને કામ કરવું એ ટ્રેડિશનલ નથી મારે મન મેં એવી ધારી મેં કીધું મારે કરા રક્ષા પણ આવી છે મારો દીકરો પ્રકાશ ભુજમાં ગયો આઈ કેમ ટુ ડુ રિસર્ચ ઓન સુટ એમ્બ્રોઈડરી સો આઈ વન્ટ ઇન ઇન ટુ અ ટેલર શોપ દેર વોઝ અ યંગ મેન વોઝ અ બ્યુટિફુલ સુટ એમ્બ્રોઈડરી બેગ સો આઈ વન્ટ અપ ટુ મને સે વેર ડુ યુ ગેટ ધેટ બેગ એન હી સેડ કારીગરી દ્વારા જ પરિચય થયો
One day, Diabin, the younger sister, looked up from her work and said in exasperation, Why are you studying us? Why don't you help us? फैसिलिटी जो ये तो कला विक्षा ने यहाँ थी शुरुआत थे हम लोग जय संस्था ने शुरुआत करे तेरे वीस कारीगर आ गाम में शुरुआत करे आज से पंद्रह वर्ष पहला अत्यारे अमरी साथ अमे लोग हजार एक कारीगरों से काम कर रहा है पच्चीस गाम लोग काम कर रहा है अने कारीगरों अमे लोग एक डिजाइन स्कूल बनाली है And you can see in them how they speak about their work. You are only getting pieces. Can I go? Ah, I do this and I'm not pleased. Do what I have to do. I'm a micro something, you see? Here, see, I'm something a micro, see? Ah, so let me see about it. Yeah, I'm not gonna rock, see? But see, I hope it's for cast and be here. But see, ah, do call, see? Okay, we don't care, you. क्षमता Wow, man, that was wonderful. Uh, we are doing uh, uh, defamiliarization in class, so the the sounds that were playing that that was so natural that my mind kept expecting to see like a gen generic film. And when I saw this, I had to force myself to take in so many elements. I I feel like I have to watch it and also have to watch it a couple more times to get all of the work you put in. That was wonderful, uh, and I. really love that uh, those women love doing that work because that uh, that's very hopeful like finding that sort of yes i don't know work and hope in hard art it, it, it's really beautiful i think we'll break for the i mean we are open for questions now if any of the audience members have any questions you can please message me i will put it on the chat 
and this time are there any questions on youtube i think it will be coming in which is great not at the minutes. moment yeah we'll wait in the meantime i actually had a question a more general question um so i did we did ethnography and auto ethnography in our third year in my ug and one of the things that always daunted me was the fact that uh uh i had to go and do this work and that to translate all the things that is happening there is 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 very scary and i was wondering if the way you approached it through animation if that helped eliminate that distance that is there when you're doing ethnography or helped to reduce that distance so that uh you know you you were able to take that first step comparatively easier you know i'll tell you what i'll tell you i know i, I know what you're saying uh, and and really ethnography doesn't care whether you know you're doing live action or um, animation i i find animation much more um, uh effective in the sense it doesn't have this power equation you know which the camera has you know when you do live action like you are in charge and they are the ones you know being feeling more vulnerable i mean that's where the difference is but in terms of you know um uh, connecting uh with the people and and then them speaking to us about you know everything in their lives i think what helped me <clears throat> was first of all they are the ones who approached me you know to make the film so they were very keen because they had seen a film of mine um, which was on my father and it was his memory of the partition so and they saw what animation can do and that was also in cloth so you know they said to you you animate our stories and uh, i even asked them that you already have your ethnographic records you know you made all these embroideries which are you know narrating the migration narrating the earthquake why do you want to make it into a film so they said that um, you know when when we send out somebody buys our piece we are not there to explain what it is and then so you know so it's in a way it's like amplifying voice you know like and 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 uh, i think uh this you know they they got introduced to the internet post earthquake you know so they became very co conscious of you know the reach of, of such a medium and so uh, one was that they were keen uh, second was that i spoke their language i speak sindhi which is very close to kachi so that helped a lot because you know hum hamare log hain that way that kind of our feeling you know that this is one of us and of course being a woman also as because women kind of tend to be more you know sort of um, comfortable you know talking about various things so i think um, all these things happened and also i had a nice gatekeeper uh, in judy freighter was always there you know to to uh, and if if i didn't understand something then you know she was there to kind of explain or to explain to them so i think it really helps to have a mediator sometimes you know but a mediator who belongs to that community you know in one sense and she has already been there for 20 years so it wasn't difficult for me uh you know there were times um, you know when uh, there were situations <laughs> where uh, megi ben especially you know she would uh, say something and then she would backtrack so and that happened she was testing me out so to speak but we kind of you know went through this and best thing in ethnography if you spend more time you know uh, and you go more often then then they be, they treat you like some somebody familiar then they're more sort of eager to tell thank you so much sir yeah. uh, we have uh, one question from uh, nasua m uh, this reminded me of satris the traditional embroidery of palestinian women each village has its own comment of own pattern of embroidery and people can actually tell where someone came from just by looking at the embroidery on their captain okay this That's is true the and palestinians also make these embroidered maps which they you know of palestine and they put them in their doorways and again you know uh, using a map uh, which is which has a very 
uh, you know, the gaze of the um, conqueror or so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> but here they kind of, you know, they're trying to get that territory, you know, through through this kind of embroidery. It's it's very beautiful what they do in Palestine. It's true. Thank you, madam. Uh, Drishti, ma'am, do we have any more questions? I think we're running late, you know. I think we'll see, uh, yeah. the, you know, I thought um, I won't make a big presentation on the um, we make images, but I'll just give a little context to it and then we can see the film. Um, see, I mean, that... Uh, uh, here we were looking at individual memories, you know, of, of individuals' experience of migration. Um, the beels, you know, the way they are almost made invisible, <laughs> you know, through by not not being acknowledged, neither their art nor their stories, you know, they remain sort of un, unrecognized or unheard. So I was very keen to, you know. Um, uh, tell they I had heard that they have many stories of water, which I didn't know. But uh, you know, so when we started talking to them, and they said that, um, and we just just asked a simple question as to you know, uh, why do you paint? And then this whole narrative started, you know, of why they paint and why do you paint with dots, you know, and and they told us that the dot. Uh, every dot represents an ancestor. So you can imagine it's like, um, how shall we say, uh, it's, it's a, um, like a galaxy of, <laughs> in each painting. They imagine so many, uh, you know, ancestors working there. And so that, you know, that knowledge that uh, they are ancestors, also informed the kind of animation we did in animating the dots because um, if if they are ancestors we cannot leave them as patterns you know we thought so it was quite challenging but it was uh, uh, I mean you know it was true to you know how we felt about this and uh, and I feel that you know they were uh, um, it's an intangible heritage so to speak you know and these these memories, these myths, you know, which kind of define identity. So basically, there are some key words that one can think about while seeing the film uh, is uh, memory, of course, and uh, image making, and uh, place making, and uh, collaboration, because that's how we kind of collectively, you know, came to this story. So let's watch the film, and then we can discuss it. किसी को सबक सिखाना हो तो भूरी अम्मा कहती है कि मुर्गा बनो पर मुर्गा बनना कितना मुश्किल है ये भी तो सुनो सबेरा होने को था थोड़ा जग रहा था थोड़ा सो रहा था बांग दी पर किसी को सुनाई ना दी फिर कोशिश की पर सिर्फ हवा ही निकली के लिए झगड़ रहे थे सारे भी कुछ तो चल के आए थे पचास पचास में भूरी अम्मा जो सबसे ज्यादा जानती थी बोली हल उसका ढूंढेगा सिर्फ बड़वा ही वो जो बादलों को नाम से जानता है 
और चाहे तो बारिश भी करा सकता है नदी आसमान पहाड़ तालाब इन सब से कुछ रिश्ता है उसका पर कहते हैं कि खाने में खाता है मुर्गा मैंने कहा नहीं 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 अगर उसने मुझे देख लिया तो कहीं पंख से पकड़कर सीधे ले जाएगा तंदूर और महुए के साथ साथ मुझे भी गटक जाएगा जरूर शेर सिंह ने मेरे पंखों पे पत्तों को चिपकाया फिर मेरे कान में फुसफुसाया अब तुम्हें कोई पहचानेगा नहीं मुर्गा हो या जंगल जानेगा नहीं हम आगे बढ़े एक शराबी मिला नशे में था धुत कुछ हिला डुला शेर सिंह को लगा कि वो ही बड़वा है बोला बड़वा जी मुश्किल वक्त आ पड़ा है मैं मेघराज को बुलाता हूँ ये लो अभी बारिश कराता हूँ झाड़ बांधो रखती बांधो बाबा देव रंगल जो कर माड़ी खड़ जागो झाड़ बांधो रखती बांधो बाबा देव रंगल जो कर माड़ी खड़ जागो माड़ी खड़ जागो इन सब में मेरी सारी पत्तियाँ उड़ गयी और उस शराबी की नजरे मुझ पर गड़ गई बोला जब इसको खाऊंगा तभी बारिश लाऊंगा मैं डरा सक पकाया कहा छुपू समझ नहीं आया भूरी अम्मा बोली बड़वा जी बुरा न मानना आप असली बड़वा हो या नकली ये है हमें जानना तो इस मटके पे खड़े हो जाओ और ये ना टूटा तो मजे से ये मुर्गा चबाओ और टूट गया तो अरे टूट गया तो आप असली बड़वा नहीं हो बाकी आप खुद ही समझदार हो मटका गया टूट शराबी लिया फूट फिर दूर से सड़ी चिड़ी का गीत सुनाई दिया तो भूरी अम्मा ने उसका पीछा किया हम भी उस आवाज के पीछे पीछे चल पड़े और पहुंच गए वहां कहा जहां ढाक बजाते असली बड़वा थे खड़े भूरी अम्मा ने कहा बड़वा जी हम पे दया करो हमारे खेतों और बच्चों को पानी दो बड़वा जी जिस मटके पे थे खड़े उससे पानी बह रहा था बिना रुके लोग पानी भरने में लग गए अचानक बड़वा जी ने मटके के टुकड़े टुकड़े कर दिए भूरी अम्मा ने कहा भला क्या है हमारा गुनाह फिर उन्हें रिझाने किसी ने मुझे चढ़ा दिया और मैंने उन्हें बिना सोचे समझे खुद ही को खिलाने का न्योता दे दिया मैंने कांपते पंखों से आंखें मूंद ली एक मीठा सा दर्द उठा आंखें खुली तो बड़वा जी के हाथ में मेरा एक नन्ना सा पंख था कहते हैं बड़वा जी जिसे छूते हैं उसकी सब पूजा करते हैं मैंने बड़वा जी की ओर देखा और कहा आप मुझे खाओगे नहीं उन्होंने कहा तुम तो सूत्रधार हो कहानी आगे बताओगे नहीं बड़वा जी हंसे मुस्कुराए और उन्होंने उस टूटे मटके पे कुछ चित्र बनाए पहले तो मेरी जान में जान आई फिर उनके चित्रों पे मेरी नजर गई ये तो पेड़ है मैं चिल्लाया और हमने अपनी दीवारों को चित्रों से सजाया उस रात बादल घिर आए और मूसलाधार बारिश लाए बिजली चमकी सनन सनन पानी बरसा घनन घनन और हमने भरे सारे बर्तन फिर सांप और कछुए आए 
उन्होंने मिट्टी में घूम घूम के गड्ढे बनाए वो गड्ढे भी पानी से भर गए गोरी अम्मा ने कहा ये तो हमें रास्ता दिखा गए हमने भी खोदे कुछ में जो पानी से भर गए रात भर में पकी गांव में आया चैन और सुकून और रोज सवेरे जब आंखें खुली तो जोर से निकला अब जैसे लोग मनोती मांगते हैं हम भी बस चित्र बनाते हैं Oh, that was again wonderful. I don't know why. Uh, I always feel like this movie, uh, this film, sorry, uh, this films end too soon because I I, I want more, uh, but I get it, it. It's a lot of work, and that was uh, also the film that won the national award in twenty sixteen. Uh, congratulations for that. Uh, I'd like to open up uh, the floor uh, for any questions we have now. Uh, you can direct them. That to me on the direct chat or to SJC English, and this will take a couple minutes. I think. I'll tell you one story while we were doing this. Yes, so that'd be one. Might be of interest because you know when we think of story, we think of causality and and stuff like that. So <clears throat> when I was working on the film title. I asked Sher Singh, uh, Sher Singh, what shall we call our film? So he said, "Ek more ki kahani." Uh -huh. More, more, you know, means uh, peacock. Peacock. So I said, "But where is the peacock in the film?" I will draw it for you, and you put it inside. Uh -huh. <laughs> I said, "But the story is about the murga, you know, the rooster." Yeah, but the you you can't say murge ki kahani. Okay, we will not call it that. Um, but I said we can't even call it ek more ki kahani because more is not the main guy in the story. Then I said, shall we call it ham chitra banate hain? Ha, wo shandar hai. But the thing is, uh, what was I asked him? But why peacock? So he said because he is beautiful. So I put that peacock in the film. Finally, you know, he's like we have because I had to do justice to you know what he also aspired <laughs> for the film. Although we couldn't call it by that title, but uh, we we put the peacock for him. <laughs> I also love the snakes and the 
Uh, they are so close to nature, you see, they learn so much. I mean, it's unfortunate that they've been called these denotified tribes and it's unfortunate that they're called, you know, criminal tribes. And they have such lovely stories, they have such lovely, innocent way of looking at the world. And, you know, and, and their art is beautiful. Yeah, that is. But all that we never hear of, you know. In fact, when we traveled with Chasing to Jabwa and, you know, on the way we would see there were signs, road signs, which said criminal zone. Whoa. Yeah, it's yeah. quite. Okay, uh, we have a question, but I don't know who it is now. So the mischief person asks, the animation in both the films was striking, ma'am. Thank you for bringing the, these to us. It was particularly interesting to see the people's pictures at the end of the films. How do they respond to the films themselves? Um, very interesting. Uh, like Maggie Ben, when she saw uh, the film, and, and in fact, uh, they saw it in cartoonly on a, on a piece of cloth under the sky, you know, they were projected over there. And uh, Judy made sure that, you know, she called me after the screening and so that, you know, they could speak to me. And Maggie Ben said, how did you manage to tell my entire life in 12 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> And uh, there was another person who, you know, um, a, a Khatri, and, you know, the, he, somebody said, it's such a nice story. He said, no, no, it's not a story. It's a history. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was very nice the way, you know, they re responded to it. They, they show it a lot, you know, apparently, mm -hmm. you know, they just have this at Color Raksha, the, the film. And uh, for the uh, Beale film, uh, it was very interesting. All these artists are were at that time, post COVID, you know, they lost their jobs at the Manav Sangralay, but they were working at the Manav Sangralay. So uh, we made a presentation there of the film. Mm. And uh, there was Shay Singh, there was his mother, and, you know, there were all the other artists whose works we had, you know, uh, mm. put in the film. Mm. And the director of the Manav Sangralay, and, you know, whoever else he had invited. So when the screen, um, after the screening, the mother kept raising her hands, you know. So uh, we, we were wondering, like, maybe she wants to say something nice about her son, you know, how happy she is. So she said, I taught him. <laughs> she wanted to claim. So everybody wanted to claim. And I think the fact that people want to claim it is, is very nice, that it belongs to everybody, therefore. Yeah. Oh. It's a, a beautiful thought. Okay, that was from uh, Dristi Man, that question. Uh, Madam, do we have any questions from YouTube or shall I uh, close the session? Um, no, no questions from YouTube. Um, maybe we can wait for about 30 seconds before you decide okay. to close. Uh, yeah. We can do that. Yeah, meanwhile, I would like to just add that though I have taken this uh, these films to class, I didn't know uh, like how women and memory were connected, like you were saying about in the beginning. So that was really amazing that how women become the medium to carry forward the memories and like, keep the memories alive. And when you were working with the male community, did you come across any instance of women particularly storing the memory or storing the memory for yes the memory. Uh, actually there are women uh, earlier the bill art was only done by the shamans you know on the walls of a house uh, so women were not allowed to do these things but uh, the moment uh, you know they started painting on paper and it became a means of livelihood then women entered the field you know and they they started doing so there is one buri bai of um, not not shir singh's mother but another buri bai who, who has actually made um, uh, quite amazing paintings of her own life, you know, in, in, in that style, in her art. Yeah. Uh, I also watched your covered story. Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly the covered, covered yards are men, you know. So are there these women covered yards or what is the role no, of No, no, no. There are no women. Women are not in Rajasthan. Women are 
they'll do all the donkey work you know they like in the when the where the covered artists are painting their uh, uh, this thing so the background you know the color the red color the grinding of the colors and you know the the varnishing all that is done by women the men do all the fine work of painting <laughs> and the storytellers is just men because they, it's itinerant you know they keep they move from village to village so sometimes their wives go with them you know and they stay they take care of the children on the outskirts of the village while the men go and you know narrate they're not really narrating stories they're reciting genealogies most of the mm -hmm. time so so there are no women cowardiers over there it's totally mm -hmm. male dominated yes <laughs> Okay, uh, we have a couple of questions. Uh, Divyanshi Mishra asks, I was curious to know, how did you choose the particular music to juxtapose against the particular image? Uh, well, you know, we did have some reference of uh, uh, the folk music, uh, music from the Peels, which, which you hear it at the end, which is an actual piece. And then uh, the music director, uh, you know, took off from there. He's very good at these things. So he he got the same rhythm, you know, of the way they think. So uh, yeah, but it's not it's not from them, but it's based on their music. Oh. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Shweta Philip asks, "Hello, ma'am. Uh, how do you do your research outside of talking to people? How do you figure out a direction to go in?" Mm, meaning outside of talking to people means what? Like I, I think uh, secondary research around yeah secondary research. secondary research. Well, yeah, of course we have to do secondary research because you know your participants aren't going to tell you everything. You know they don't even know what you want, what you don't know. <laughs> so how are they going to tell you what you don't know? Because they 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 assume everybody knows everything, right? So um, yes, so there are. I mean there are you know, books and articles and journals, you know, where people speak about certain things. About the Bheels, Mashwita Devi has worked a lot in that area. You know, I mean, she spoke a lot for them. And then uh, Jay Swaminathan, you know, who set up the Manav Sangralai, he wrote uh, a lovely, you know, little book called Perceiving Fingers. So, you know, one gets an idea of... Uh, what the concerns are, you know, around by, through various scholars and things like that. So, yes, of course, uh, some secondary research is required. And uh, but we also did a lot of ethnographic research. We went, went with uh, chasing to his village and that, that the kind of um, information we got there. Uh, none of these books would have told us. For example, you know, uh, we we met Shay Singh's father-in-law, who is a Badba. And uh, so I, he said he was a vegetarian. So I said, then what do you do with the murgas that are offered to you, you know? So he said, oh, I just take a, a feather off the uh, murga so that nobody can ever touch him. Nobody can. He will live his full life. That was a very interesting, inform you know, which, which we wouldn't have. So that got integrated into the story. So it's being alive and uh, I mean alert or alive, or alive of course, but being very alert all the time. You know, being on is what they say. You have to be on all the time. Then you get it. <laughs> uh, I'm also curious to know about one thing. Uh, I know you've been animated for a long, animating for a long time, and how is the computer changed? how it was i i couldn't do any of this work without the computer because you know to uh, to um to um uh this thing embroideries uh to animate embroideries uh is not possible in the traditional sense you know where we drew everything frame by frame there would have been i mean to embroider frame by frame would have been <laughs> yeah. like forget it you know so that is one thing that we are able to scan the actual fa fabric and you know animated uh, that is one thing so the software also allows us to do certain kind of things which um, on our own 
even if somebody could do it would take forever and ever you know yeah. so so it has changed uh, that quite a bit you know so it it actually <clears throat> having learned animation in the traditional sense makes one more uh, explore you know one makes one explore things in a different way i can see the value of of um, digital art you know i mean mm. and then use it in the way that suits me you know okay uh uh, in in the interest of the AI question, I'll just ask you: How do you see AI uh, come into this picture of animation or and art? Do you uh, see it as threatening? Do you see it as something that enables uh, more possibilities or something like that? I don't, I, mean, I don't think it's threatening in any sense, but yeah, I can see people using it. And I mean, there's also, you know, now that you, you do some software, you just key in words and it creates images. So yeah, of course, all this is going to happen. You can't stop it. And, uh, you know, um, people use AI to, you know, like uh, just put your phone and, you know, you start seeing things. So it's interesting. And uh, but I think in, in, in our country, everything coexists, you know, forever. Mm. I mean, you know, like look at the Kaurias, they're still going on. <laughs> there's digital storytelling, there's television. There'll also be holographic, you know, storytelling, who knows? But this is not going to stop, you know? So mm. I'm, I, I personally don't feel threatened because I, I am telling stories in the way I want to tell in the manner. It's it's a small niche, but that's that's I'm okay with that, you know. But yeah, I mean, on the on the larger level, I mean, in terms of the industry, I don't know. Maybe they'll they'll um, you know they always find ways of uh, you know using it, like in gaming and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, uh, madam, do we have any questions on YouTube? Mm, no, no, no questions. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, madam. I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Department of English uh, at St. Joseph. Uh, it was a great pleasure to have you and these movies were wonderful. Uh, Dr. Nina's work is widely available on YouTube, so I'd uh, urge our audience members to go and treat yourself to more of her work and re-watch these films because I feel like we didn't get all of that which we could uh, in this screening. Uh, thank you so much, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you thank you so much of your conference enjoy thank you, thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, i'll just Bye. make a small announcement for tomorrow's session so tomorrow is the last day of the online plenary and um, it'll be at the same time at 6 30 and we have the science fiction writer samit basu coming uh, he'll be in conversation with professor cynthia and uh, gayatri from first ma so please make sure to register if you haven't already. Uh, I hope to see you all there. Thank you.